Okay, so good evening. On Wednesdays I'm answering questions. So, you're welcome to listen. These are questions that have been asked through the website. So we try to keep them about meditation practice. And they should be interesting for you here, practicing in our center. Tonight's question is about the role or the place of thinking about your practice, reflecting, analyzing, thinking about whether you're doing your practice right, analyzing your practice, that sort of thing. And of course there is room for this. Um, this is something that you even see in the texts where the Buddha, the Bodhisatta, when he was trying to become enlightened, he had to think to himself, Wait, what if I were to do it this way instead? To correct his practice, he had to think. And you see this about the monks like Ananda who had to correct his practice. Or there's a general... There's a general sense that it's a part of our practice. And our practice isn't just mindfulness, of course. There are many other qualities like ethics and just even the, learning the technique of the practice and that sort of thing. There are many practicalities like livelihood, how are you going to eat, where are you going to sleep, what are you going to wear. One of these practicalities is the correcting of one's practice, the analysis of one's practice. It's called vimangsa. Vimangsa means wisdom, really, but, but in regards to a task that you undertake, vimangsa means the ability to discern right from wrong and, and proper, improper, effective, ineffective, that sort of thing being able to correct your activities, even whether it's meditation or not, you need to be able to analyze and refine and correct in order to succeed in whatever you do. You can't just push, plow ahead, right? Sometimes there's correcting that needs to be done. So in regards to thinking about meditation and correcting your meditation, there are, I would say, three things that uh, are, are the criteria for, for answering whether you can and you should um, think about your practice. The first one is that there is something wrong. So, so what often happens is meditators feel like there's something wrong or perceive that there's something wrong with their practice when there actually isn't or they misperceive that this is wrong with their practice, but instead they say that is wrong with their practice. What I mean is, for example, they feel pain and they think that's something wrong. Or their mind is chaotic and they think that's something wrong. Or they can't control their breath, their stomach, say, and that's something wrong. And those aren't wrong, those are actually uh, insights or, or um, observations that we want to make about reality that it is. In, uh, inconstant, impermanent, unpredictable, that it is unpleasant at times, unsatisfying really all the time, and uncontrollable. But there are wrong practice. Wrong practice would be when you're not being mindful, when you're uh, being mindful of some things, but not being mindful of something else. Of course, the problems in our practice are, or the, what's wrong is 
when we're practicing with anger, like boredom, for example, when we're practicing with doubt, confusion, worry, fear, craving, when we're practicing out of desire for pleasant states or desire for enlightenment, focusing on even the goal. If you obsess about it, about enlightenment or cling to enlightenment, well, even that becomes an object of distraction, diversion, and, and drags you down away from enlightenment. So there has to be a problem. It can't be that the practice is unpleasant or or uh, or so on. If it, it can't, we have to be clear that our experiences are not going to be a problem. They're not going. There's nothing wrong with the practice just because of what we experience. What's wrong with the practice is how we're relating to it. Most often, not being mindful of something, and that leads to the second aspect of what you should think about your practice, and that is that not only there has to be something wrong, but you have to be aware of what's wrong. So this is another th thing that goes wrong with practice, is we don't realize. And this is where I think um, thinking about your practice can be quite valuable. Because if you're practicing, being mindful, trying to be mindful of the stomach and the foot and feelings and so on. If you just plow ahead and be mindful of what you know to be mindful of, it's quite common for you to start to miss something. You start to feel bored, for example, and you're trying to be mindful, but you're so bored that it's hard. Right? Or, or you have a lot of doubt. You're trying to push as much and do as much as you can, but you really can't put the effort in because you're bored. Or because you're, 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 sorry, because you're doubt. You're not convinced that it's useful. Or you really want to want to do it and you like to do it, but you're lazy. And so you're ignoring some part of the practice. It's quite common. Ignoring disliking of pain, uh, boredom of the practice, craving for something. And we're not mindful of those things. Maybe even just the liking of the practice. If it feels good, and you like it, but you ignore the liking and you're mindful of everything else, your mindfulness re is reduced and eventually becomes ineffective and you're not really being mindful because you're just enjoying, because the enjoyment builds. And of course leads to disappointment when and if, when eventually the, the objects and the experience changes. So th stepping back and thinking about your practice often gives you the perspective to say, ah, oh, yes, there I, I was meditating, but I was missing the boredom, or I was missing the doubt, or I wasn't mindful of usually the five hindrances. Some one or another of them becomes a, a real drag on your practice. And the third quality is that you have to you have to uh, correct the practice. And, and where this is most important is not just you have to do something about it, but you have to do the correct thing. Because it's quite common as well, once we perceive a problem with our practice, uh, something wrong with our practice, we correct it in the wrong way, or we do something that's actually uh, not only ineffective, but often problematic. Like if you're bored, for example, well, then maybe I'll go and enjoy myself, or... I'll find some way to be more pleasant. I'll go and talk to someone. I'm bored, so I'll take a break and go and, you know, avoiding the challenge of dealing with boredom, which is actually just aversion. It's an, it's an anger-based mind state. If you have your doubt, well, I'll go and read something or that sort of thing, rather than challenging yourself, facing the doubt and being mindful of it. So it, not, it is, of course, possible that we just ignore it. We have a problem and we ignore it, that's right. But it's also possible that we try to solve, try to fix our practice and do everything wrong. So I would say there are sort of three ways you can fix your practice, and that is they are uh, the, the ways that are problematic, that actually make it worse, ways that are 
provisionally useful and ways that are all and how and the fixing of your practice that's ultimately useful so ways that are 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 actually making it worse is where you avoid the problem or you um, attack one problem with another problem like you're really negative about the practice so you try to find a way to make it more enjoyable right you don't like something so you try to find a way to like it or you have doubt so you find ways to build up confidence well actually that 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 isn't so bad to talk about that's sort of a provisional way um, but you might um, well, you might force yourself to believe for example we might um, very commonly uh, avoiding is in this category so you have uh, disliking of pain so you find ways to not have pain for example you don't like walking meditation so you just sit all the time that sort of thing um, but I think what's really interesting are the provisionally useful um, means of fixing your practice and I think that's what a lot of people often are curious about because the ultimately ultimately beneficial way is, is of course just to be mindful of what you're not being mindful of when you step back and look and you realize aha well the problem is I'm ignoring this one so really the, the, the ultimate solution to um, to wrong practice that you should use this introspection, sort of stepping back and analyzing your practice to, to pinpoint, to identify. The, the solution is uh, to be mindful of that. That's it. It's quite simple. But there are many, many sort of provisionally useful um, techniques, and they involve not trying to fix the problem or avoid the problem, but to make the problem more bearable or more endurable or less severe so if you're very angry love can be sending love and and compassion can be a very useful sort of provisional tool it doesn't help you learn about anger but it can make the anger more manageable if you have lust or desire you can look at the body and and the parts of the body and think about them and that's quite useful but provisionally, it doesn't help you learn about lust and desire. It doesn't help you understand that reality. It isn't the same as, for example, saying liking, liking or wanting, wanting, or observing the, the object of your desire, seeing, seeing or hearing or thinking. If you have doubt, you can think about the Buddha or fear as well. People who have fear living in the forest, afraid of ghosts or monsters or animals, you can think about the Buddha and it gives you courage, it gives you energy, it gives you faith and confidence in yourself. But provisionally, it doesn't help you learn about doubt and, and learn about the states that lead to doubt and that sort of thing, which the Buddha talked about in the Satipatthana Sutta. And there are other provisionally useful um, techniques to deal with things like being tired so if you're tired you can get up and do walking meditation of course but you can also look at the light or go outside splash water on your face the, the there are, so there are I would say an infinite ideas you can ways you can come up with to support your practice but it comes down to a um, your reasoning for doing these things, if your reason is to avoid the problem, then you end up creating uh, a habit of avoidance. So they should never be, um, when, you, when you step back and look at your practice, you should never be looking for a way to fix and, and get away from the problem. You should be looking for a way to manage it. And, and like a strat strat strategist, like a, a war warlord, a, a martial, uh, what do you call it, a general in the war. You have to look at the battlefield and not just rush in, but you have to figure out strategically when to retreat and when to move forward and which ways to move forward. Because our goal in the meditation is ultimately to just be mindful of the objects. But if there's a lot of pain, for example, 
You don't say, I'll, I'll make it so there's no pain. But you say, I'll retreat and I'll make it so that the pain is manageable and I can actually be mindful of it. With the idea in mind that eventually I just sit through the pain, even at full force. If you have anger and you say, well, I can't deal with this anger, it's too much. Then you step back and you send love for a bit. And you find that the anger is reduced and then you can deal with it. And eventually, your goal, as the general's goal in the war, is eventually to defeat the enemy. Not to always be retreating, but sometimes you have to retreat and come back at it from a different angle. So absolutely there is um, room for, for thought, for thinking about your practice. But it should not be as a means to fix and to, to change things so that you don't have to deal with your problems. And the other thing I guess I would say is that if you're going to think about your practice, thinking itself can obviously become a problem. And I think this is, the person who asked the question was fairly well aware of this. And this can be a problem where you actually substitute practice with thinking about the practice and it becomes a habit where you're constantly analyzing and as a result doubting. I would say where it becomes a problem you'll be able to see if you're mindful because the problems arise, it, it, it arises in the same way as it would in the practice. You'll start to incorporate doubt. Not only are you thinking about your practice but you're doubting or you're confused or you're worried or you're wanting, you're, you're desire, you start to get into the habit of thinking about your practice because I'm going to find the right way, I'm going to find a way to make it better, I'm going to find a way to make it perfect. So thinking about your practice is useful, it should be done within fairly strict parameters, understanding that ultimately the solution is, the ultimate solution you should come to is be mindful of those things that you catch that you weren't being mindful of. Your thinking about the practice allows you to pinpoint those objects, those aspects of your experience that you were ignoring, that you were avoiding. So that's an answer to that question, the question of whether and where and how and to what extent thinking about your practice is useful and beneficial. Thank you.